Hello, everyone. I see the room filling up here. My name is uh, Joe Morgan, and uh, I'm with Virtuoso. We're going to give a few moments for everybody to uh, fill into the room, and uh, then we're going to get started. So just uh, hang out with us for a few seconds, and then uh, we'll get started right away. Thank you. I think we're going to give everybody about one more minute and then we're going to start off here. So I still see quite a few people joining. Um, so we want to be as quick as possible to get to it. But uh, thanks, everybody, for joining us today. And we'll get started here in just a few seconds. Thank you. All right, Brian, I think it's time. Are you ready? Sounds great, Joe. Let's get started. I know. They're still having people cycle in. They're just going to have to catch up with us, but we've got quite a few people have joined us now. So uh, first thing, uh, my name is Joe Morgan. I am the VP of Cloud here at Virtuoso. And today, I'm, I'm super excited. I've actually been excited all week to get this opportunity to, to have this webinar today. But uh, we're going to have some time to talk specifically to MSPs about how they can use cloud services to be more profitable. And by now, everybody's heard about and had some interaction with most likely the cloud, but I just know from having been an MSP myself, uh, and then Brian can, can attest to this here as well, that you know the industry data of how far along the MSPs are on their journey and what the reality of that journey actually looks like can often be two completely separate things. So. We really want to deep dive into today what it actually means to be profitable as an MSP using cloud services. And uh, Brian, who joins me here, is the president and founder of Energen, and he is going to talk specifically about what he does in his business. And we'll get into his background and uh, uh, history and how he's using our, our our services in a little bit. But he's going to kind of try to wrap in exactly the experiences he has had as well into this so that we can have a conversation with you all today. And I do want to remind everyone that we are going to have a Q&A section at the very end. So please put some questions into that Q&A. Um, you know, we didn't preload any questions. That means if I nobody puts a question there, I have to make something up at the end so it doesn't feel like nobody said anything. So do me a favor and, and, and try to Think about this stuff as we go along, ask some questions and uh, be a part of the conversation because we really do want to, uh, you know, hopefully make this be something that is informative and beneficial to all of you. And Joe, if I can just dive in right there. Uh, first of all, uh, of course, thank you so much. I'm glad to be here uh, chatting with you today and uh, I'm eager for the conversation. Uh, just to back up what Joe's saying about questions, I encourage you to uh, post those questions during our discussion, uh, even though we'll move on to other topics, likely by the time you post your question, we will loop back to those at the end. So um, uh, our intention is that you'd be entering those questions while we converse, and then we'll pick up everything at the end. Uh, that way we can maintain our train of thought for the conversation, uh, but we'll be sure to loop back. And if you ask a question about something we hit early on, well, we're happy to loop back to that. So uh, thanks again, Joe, for having me. I'm glad to be here. Hey, Brian, I really appreciate it. And uh... You know, it's just so everybody knows ahead of time, we we didn't do a whole lot of prep on this. We decided we were going to let this be fresh. So stick with us, enjoy the ride, and let's uh, let's jump right in. So first of all, right off the bat, the thing that I want to talk about specifically is the pains that MSPs have right now with trying to sell cloud services. And you know, what I think often gets missed in the conversation about MSPs is that these are small organizations. These are a few people that are tech experts that want to provide solutions to their customers, but the industry is constantly changing and always pushing new tools at them. And there's a complexity there that people don't understand that when you're an MSP and you walk in that door and you start talking to that client and they start saying, hey, here's the problem. I need this solution. 
you know, at least for me, eight times out of 10, that was a brand new problem that I had never heard of that I was being asked to be the expert and solve for them. Right. And a lot of times it's a consulting job just as much as anything in being that expert in the room and figuring out what is needed in order to solve that problem. But it's complex and it's hard because you're expected to know everything. Um, obviously, how do you bill? What do you charge? Um, you're in business for yourself a lot of times. These are small businesses, entrepreneurs. So it's going, hey, how do I duplicate myself? How do I scale my business? How do I provide a better solution to my customers? These are the things that are going through the mindset of an MSP every day that people forget about when they just bombard them with different product offerings and expectations. And often this was something I struggled with terribly as an MSP. MSPs undervalue their time, right? They look at what the solution is and what the solution costs. They look at what um, the uh, is best. Your, your job is to see what's best for the customer. And they often leave money on the table for themselves and in, in, with, in a world where the hyperscalers, which is do, where most of the cloud workloads go, dominate, there's no margin for the MSP, right? And so they often will get paid one time on reoccurring services and lose out on what used to be them going and maintaining infrastructure at the customer location or whatever. And so, you know, there's just no margin left. And so these are all things that... Uh, you know, we're going to jump into and try to deep dive in. And uh, those things specifically is where we're going to target. But if you, you're you sitting here and you're listening to this and you're thinking, you know what, Joe, that doesn't resonate. There's other issues that I have that are more important. Of course, that jumps us right in this next slide. Put it into the Q&A, drop it in the bottom and let's talk about it. But uh, otherwise, I'm not going to waste any more time on this. And, and actually, gonna... while we're there, Joe, I just want to point out one of the uh, hurdles that uh, I have to work or I had to work through uh, as we were starting our relationship uh, with Virtuoso is in this goes to the complexity bullet that you had at the top of the last slide is everyone sort of has their own language about how they talk about different concepts and ideas. So even moving from uh, that notion of uh, our company as primarily website builders and developers um, into understanding ourselves as a hosting company. Um, that's the language uh, that I was most familiar with coming out of uh, my background 20 years ago. Um, and then moving into understanding ourselves as a managed services provider. Or when we talk about things like hyperscalers, we're talking about um, the big providers, the Amazon Web Services, the Google Cloud, the Azure, um, where they have seemingly infinite capacity um, but there's complexity that goes with that. And I know we're going to dive into that a little bit more, but even as we're uh, inviting questions, if we're using jargon or language where you're like, that's, I'm not sure what you're talking, or I love the cloud. The cloud's always my favorite. It's just another word for somebody else's computer, right? Yep. <laughs> um, but understanding how cloud infrastructure is different in a way than just renting a dedicated box or even a a pr private parent so you can spin up your own virtual private servers. Um, so those are all like learning steps that our company had to go through to move into uh, a cloud uh, relationship with Virtuoso is just walking through each one of those steps. So if we're tossing around jargon or whatever, feel free to uh, pop those questions into the um, in, into the Q&A as well. There's no such thing as a dumb question in this conversation. We're happy to answer anything. Yeah. And, you know, uh, I oftentimes forget that I just rattle this stuff off off the top of my head like hyperscalers and then everybody understands what I'm talking about. And uh, and it's interesting that, you know, what we're trying to do is figure out and understand service providers. And our platform was, uh, you know, really built for MSPs. And so we actually internally discussed, do we want to have a hosting service provider on as one of the first webinars we do? And I said, look, it's the same pains. Service providers all have the same pains. You are a MSP, even if you have one specific persona or target that you go after, right? Um, but this is this is a good lead in. Um, Brian, why don't you give everybody a little bit about your background, what it is you do, and you know how you um, uh, kind of discovered us. And let's get into how you and I met maybe a little bit. Sure. We, uh, I, I, you're going to hear me refer to Joomla a lot today. And as I talk through my own uh, history and biography, you'll understand why that's the case uh, in particular. Uh, but one of the things I enjoy about um, having participated extensively in the Joomla community is everybody has what they call their Joomla story, uh, which is how you got started in technology and web development in the first place um, in, in different milestone moments on that journey and how you got to where you are. Um, so I'll just uh, briefly cover my Joomla story for you or my, my uh, more broad technology 
technology-based story. Uh, in the mid-90s, I started out providing uh, IT support and web development for nonprofit organizations, uh, especially churches. We did a lot of churches in the early days. Um, and uh, honestly, it was just I was the youngest, most technically adept guy in the room. Um, so when it came time in the mid to late 90s uh, for a lot of small local organizations to start having a presence online, um, I kind of became the guy that they went to with no background or experience. So I, I had very humble beginnings using Microsoft front page and Dreamweaver uh, and then FTPing all those HTML files up to the web server. Um, and then was delighted in the 2000s to discover PHP uh, based content management systems. Uh, and for me, that was a huge light bulb moment because uh, it was the realization that we could set up websites that non-technical users could manage their own content without having a huge learning curve, depending upon how well the website was set up. Um, and so I was uh, very excited about, oh, thank you, uh, Lonnie. I see that uh, shout out for Joomla. I love it. If you haven't checked it out in the last three years, there's been some amazing stuff. That's a conversation for another day. Uh, but I started off with uh, PHP Nuke and Post Nuke, and then somebody introduced me to Mambo. Um, so I'm actually one of the people that's been using Joomla longer than Joomla has been around, uh, which is about 17 years now, 17, 18 years. Um, and uh, shortly thereafter, founded Intergen Web Solutions. Uh, I had been working and the web development piece was just part of my job with other organizations. So in 2006, I uh, founded Intergen as a web developer, um, just a small freelance one person uh, deal building websites, starting to add some mom and pop, uh, small and medium sized businesses to the mix. Um, and then in 2013, uh, it was the first Joomla event that I attended. Uh, fun fact, Matt Mullenweg of WordPress was the keynote speaker for that event in Boston. Um, so I've always appreciated the camaraderie that the WordPress and Joomla and other open source uh, software communities have with each other. And it was a very collegial uh, event. I didn't realize how historic that was at the time. Uh, it was on the, uh, the campus at Harvard. So it was just a, a, a wonderful opportunity for cross-pollination between those two projects. And we've continued uh, to provide WordPress support as well. So we know both platforms really well, uh, but we are primarily a Joomla shop. Um, I stayed heavily involved and became increasingly involved as a volunteer in the Joomla community uh, until 2019 when I was elected to the board of directors for Open Source Matters and the Joomla Foundation as the treasurer. And then uh, in 2020, I believe it was in March, uh, was elected as the president of the Board of Open Source Matters and the Joomla Foundation. I should be clear, I'm here today as Brian Mitchell, president of Intergen. I don't presently have uh, a volunteer position that I'm doing within Joomla, and I speak strictly on my own behalf. Uh, any statements I make are on behalf of myself and of Intergen, and not particularly of Ju uh, Joomla or Open Source Matters, while I still love those projects, um, and I'm very excited to see them succeed. And then uh, the last step in the journey, or the most recent one, had me in 2023 going to my first CloudFest uh, in Germany, which is one of the world's largest uh, inter internet and technology gatherings, uh, thousands of attendees. It's crazy. Um, and I uh, went specifically looking for ways to improve our services for our customers and was really interested in containerizing websites um, to provide better security, more control, more um, uh, traceability in terms of troubleshooting issues, not having everything on these big servers that we're all sharing all the things all the time, and uh, hit a couple of presentations by the Virtuoso team and found myself talking to this crazy guy at the Virtuoso booth, who I'm sharing the webinar with today. So that's kind of what got me from the very beginnings of web development in the mid-90s uh, up to sitting on a webinar uh, conversing with Joe today. And we are presently a client of Virtuoso. Um, we're early days, but it's been an exciting few months. And um, both sides of the equation, we're continuing to learn and to grow and to figure out how we can best uh, help each other and figure out how to serve our clients more effectively. So uh, again, thanks for the invitation, Joe. And I think that's a good summary of my background. That's a great summary. And, you know, I learned new stuff that I didn't know uh, listening to it today. And, you know, it's funny that we had to uh, both, you know, being a United States uh, residents had to go to Germany to meet each other. That was yeah. only yeah. the second time I had ever attended a cloud fest. And, um, you know, I just come on board with Virtuoso 
and I go on stage and it was the most nervous thing I'd ever done in my life. I mean, uh, my, my ears were like burning red from the blood in it, you know, and it was hard to get through. And I got off stage and I said, Oh, there's nobody that's going to like that. And it was terrible. I'm just going to like quickly get back to the booth. And then here comes Brian. And you were like super excited and you were yeah. like, Hey, you know, it's like, you've done so much in the industry and some of these open source stuff. And then you're so humble about it, but you know, it really is amazing that we got connected and that I was able to get you on here today and that you're using our platform. And I do appreciate you being here. Um, that was a great introduction. And so I do want to take a second to talk a little bit about what my journey was and how I ended up here at Virtuoso as well. And so I, uh, and I wasn't going to bring this up, but just hearing your background and how you get started, I was kind of the same way. So I grew up in a small town and I remember the teachers in the classrooms would have me after class come to their house to fix their computers in exchange for, you know, like a case of Dr. Pepper or something. You can see my little Dr. Pepper clock up here. Um, but uh, I was known as just, you know, the, the, the kid who knew how to do tinker with computers and get stuff done. And uh, my parents had been in the printing business, which, you know, saw a downturn and they decided to switch to web development and web hosting. And so I actually... I think in high school said, Hey, I can manage that server for you and stick a server in a, a co-location closet somewhere. And my parents were crazy enough to, uh, to entrust a high school student to their entire business. And, uh, and so I put the first web server online, uh, and, uh, you know, it wasn't long before I said, you know, there's a need for this. There's other people that are out there who are wanting someone to manage their server. And so I bought another and co load it and another and co load it. And eventually um, in 2008, I decided to make it official and rented my own space and created Joe's Data Center. And so essentially from 2008 until I came on board with Virtuoso earlier this year, I ran and operated uh, a data center uh, out of Kansas City, Missouri. And man, I never thought I'd do anything but that. I just loved it. It was like my own personal giant Lego set, right? Like I'm, I'm building racks and cabinets and buying brand new servers and building networks and, and uh, meeting with customers that had similar pains and problems. And we were like figuring out solutions for them in real time. And it was, it was amazing. Um, and you know, it's funny because it kind of was my first visit to CloudFest and talking to some other people in the infrastructure business that that it started to click to me that there's a change in the industry. It should have already been apparent. And it was apparent that, you know, we had adapted as we went through and margins got worse and competition got higher, but it just didn't really click to me just how wide and spread that, that problem of competition was from the big three, right? We talked about those hyperscalers earlier. And, and, and I started to go, man, you know, where's the future? Where is this going? What is the long-term uh, result of this consolidation of the infrastructure in this industry? And I think this is actually, Brian, what I was talking about on stage uh, when we first met, which is, you know, if I went back today with the resources I had at the time, which was nothing, uh, and tried to start Joe's data center. You'd think with all this knowledge of having done this for 13 years or uh, whatever, that I would suddenly be much better at it. But instead, um, I, I was like, I don't think I could do it again. And it's because the competition has become so fierce. It's yeah. no longer who is that smart guy who knows how to get these things done. And it's who has the capital to go invest in large amounts of space, buy ma massive amount of facility uh, equipment, who can sign long-term, very complicated leases in uh, co-location facilities. I remember when I first started, if you wanted to interconnect with someone, you got up in the ceiling and you pulled an ethernet cable over and you connected to them and that was it. You know, now you have to get a, a lease with a real estate company to put fiber through the ceiling and you have to have a contract with, I mean, sure, it's, it's maybe for the better, for the reliability of the internet, except for the fact that only two or three companies dominate 83% of that infrastructure uh, on the back end. And it's only heading more and more that direction, right? And so it was at that point in time, I said, somebody needs to do something about this. Something needs to be done. And uh, so I was looking at the software that Virtuoso was putting out there that, that was specifically designed to power the alternative cloud, uh, is which is, I think, what it was called at the time, which is the idea that, hey, you know, the, the smaller data centers, the mid-sized businesses and the, the small, medium-sized enterprises, 
they need to be able to have an equal footing and an equal place to be able to compete. Um, and we provide software to be able to do that, which is, you know, I think their mission statement is uh, easy, accessible, affordable cloud for all. And, and I remember the first time I saw uh, Alex Fine, who's the CEO of Virtuoso, he had a sign behind him that talked about democratization, right, of the internet. And I thought, that's weird. You know, I don't know if I've ever really heard someone describe something as being democratized like that. And so I Googled it and it was like giving people choice, the ability yeah. to compete. It was about. That's really, yeah, go it, ahead, Brian. It, it, and that's really what you're talking about in terms of it's, it, it's interesting to me in terms of the evolution of our conversations and relationship as well. Appreciating you're coming at the data from the data center perspective. So uh, prior to jumping on the call today, we, I, you know, I spent some time talking about the value chain, you know, from the data center that hosts all the things all the way down to the um, small businesses and nonprofit organizations that I was talking about in the beginning. There's a stack of uh, companies and individuals and service providers between those two things that that uh, sort of pool their resources to provide those services ultimately to the, the end user is our customers who aren't really interested in managing their website or building a website, they want to take care of their customers. And the, their website is just a tool that allows them to do that. So understanding where we fit in the chain and what I've come to appreciate and, and was really actively looking for, and that's why I was so excited when I met you guys in Germany, is Virtuoso has plugged that last gap, which is I've never had an interest in running a data center. I'm not a hardware guy. But as our company has grown, I've uh, had a need to we just keep outgrowing our hosts, you know, we're way beyond the days of renting little reseller accounts one at a time for each new website we build and then getting the dedicated server. And then I have clients that are big enough for a VPS. And then can we put them in a private parent VPS so I can split it up and reallocate resources, more and more complexity, more and more cost. And I just uh, knew that cloud was like the next step for us in terms of the evolution, but even the folks that are selling cloud, they want to sell it as monolithic chunks of infrastructure. Here's the five boxes you need to set up your private cloud. And it's sort of, uh, like I said, coming from the opposite side of the equation, um, where you have to have this huge investment up front to, to move into a, a cloud infrastructure. And for me, that was the aha moment. Like Virtuoso, I, I feel, and, and it's been my experience in the last few months, has solved that problem beautifully. We don't have to jump off a cliff to make the next step in our evolutionary process. We can do it incrementally and we can do it in a way that's cost effective where you start saving money day one. So let's go there. Let's do it. Let's get into it a little bit. Let's let's go a little farther in. And, and I'll say that that ability for someone to get started and without that huge investment, that was one of the things that really resonated to me. When, mm -hmm. when they say easy, accessible, affordable cloud for all, it's like it can't be a cloud for all if the barrier to entry is way up here, right? Yeah. Like if, if you have to make a major investment to start selling it, then you are immediately cutting out half of the MSPs I know. Definitely right. you'd be cutting out me where I got started, right? So that's so important. Um, and like you said, the thing that really needs to happen is that MSPs should focus on what they actually love to do, right? Which is solve problems for their customers. They don't want to, like you're, the MSP today, even though they're tech people, do they really care about the physical server it's hosted on or do they care about the solution they're designing for their customer, right? Like, should you have to care about the infrastructure or should you just care about, you know, uh, using those tools to, to grow your business? Um, and, uh, and that's the stuff that makes this job awesome is that there is so many, so much technology out there and there are so many different ways to do this, but it also kind of sucks, right? Like <laughs> uh, all of those tools, especially when they're not built for you are extremely difficult to navigate around. And I remember I went to a, um, uh, a security conference and I thought, man, I'm going to go up to them and I'm going to ask them how I can take their tools and offer it to my customers. Cause my customers care about security and I'm their expert for their it stuff. And I went booth to booth from these vendors at the security conference and in each one of them, they said, we're not interested in talking to you unless you're uh, an enterprise, unless you've already got a security team in-house that's looking to enhance what they're doing. We don't even want to start that conversation. And I thought, man, like talk about solutions in the market that everybody needs. 
that have no way been designed for the guys actually out there doing the work, which is the MSPs, right? And the cloud is the exact same boat. And it kind of gets to what you were talking about a second ago, Brian, is that that monolithic approach of making them buy a bunch of servers and set up this big cloud and everything else. And it's like, hey, I just want to put a website online for my customer and I want it to scale so that I can focus on what's best for them. And it's because these things were not built for MSPs. Um, and so very little reward is also left for the MSPs on the back end as well, because the enterprise, of course, has this buying power to say, no, give us this advanced tool set. We've got trained staff individuals that can focus on just that and give it to us at the best possible price point. Then if you're an MSP and you're getting started small, that you get none of those advantages, right? So, um, but let's dive into like some of these pain points specifically. And I know, Brian, that you... You had some some stuff here that resonated with you, and we were kind of previewing these slides right before we jumped on here, and uh, and it was it was specifically about some of this this complexity and and the problems you run into. Uh, I don't know if you want to jump in and 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 take over here. Yeah, I can talk briefly about some of that. We've um, uh, we've done some work uh, with uh, some of the larger companies and. Uh, one of the things that was striking to me uh, right from the word go, uh, I, I forget when we started looking at Amazon Web Services, at least five, uh, five to seven to 10 years ago. I don't even remember the time frame for that. But I remember the first thing that I encountered is you had to learn an entirely new vocabulary. Um, so Amazon has uh, uh, a different name for everything that's not industry standard. It's standard to Amazon. Um, and so there's this extra layer, and not just in the, the lexicon that they use, but even in how the tools interrelate with each other. And I've had similar experiences with Google Cloud where it's just, it just seems like there's a lot of technical hurdles to jump through to do really basic stuff. And not that we can't figure those things out. It's just, we've got clients with more pressing needs than figuring out how to handle my DNS through route whatever, um, because they don't have a standard name server set up. And one of the things that I've enjoyed about the relationship with Virtuoso is that everything they're using is, um, uh, focused on industry standards. So you need to know a little bit about Linux. It's beneficial to understand a little bit about how containers work, um, but the platform is a service that we're using primarily right now, even abstracts a lot of that concern away from me. So um, the, the standard setup for spinning up a website, uh, and I know Joe, you're gonna do a demo on this at the end, but there's one container with the web server and the file system and another container for the database. And the platform handles the connection between the two for you. You just create the environment and say, I want a platform with a database and a web server, and it's ready to go. And if you know just a little bit of command line Linux, you can be up and running without the overhead of all the extra tools and the licensing that can go with um, a lot of the control panels that are out there. And there's been a lot of turmoil in the control panel industry in the last five years. Um, Virtuoso, if you want, allows you to avoid all of that or uh, one of the things that we found useful because not everybody on my team is comfortable or, or familiar with command line Linux is we are installing uh, a control panel for some of our servers uh, to manage clients because it provided a tool set that my team's already familiar with. There was literally zero learning curve for my team. I had some personally in terms of how to use the platform, how to set up the servers, but once they're set up, it operates just like it does at any other plain vanilla host with two key exceptions, Joe. And these are my favorite exceptions. Oh, One, we, we get to pay for the service as we use it. So now when I'm scaling my server, I don't have to get the X terabyte server when I've got two clients that are new and I need to grow my business to add that next server. We get to pay for two clients worth of resources. Um, so, and so that's thing one is incredible cost efficiency. And I can tell you, Joe, I think I shared this with you last week. Um, the first server that we've transitioned all of our clients from into Virtuoso, I just ran the math this morning. We're seeing about a 78% reduction in cost, uh, on that server because we're only paying for the resources we're using as we're using them. So the cost savings are incredible thing. One thing two, infinite scalability. Joe, I'm glad you love to play with the boxes and the racks and the networking and to hook up all that stuff in the data center. I want nothing to do with that. So I've been looking for a solution that allowed me to abstract away, trying to guess how much RAM my server needs, how much CPU my server needs. Virtuoso allows me to allocate a minimum amount and a maximum amount. 
and it will decide within that range how much I need and only bill me for what I need. So that's been one of the biggest benefits of moving to a cloud infrastructure. We've been able to ease in. And the only thing that makes it uh, significant is I got to get all the sites off of the old server before I can turn that server off. And I can tell you, it was a big deal in our offices when we flipped the switch on that server and said, we're never paying that bill again. Um, so just being able to make that transition and, and then our costs uh, in the Virtuoso cloud platform allowed us just to grow our needs incrementally. And the nice thing is I know the platform is going to allow me to continue to do that without having every time I want to do the next chunk of growth, having to calculate how much CPU should my next box have? How much RAM should my next box have? How much disk does my next box need? I don't need to worry about any of that. All I need to do is say, do I have enough allocated within the pool that I'm using for this particular website? If the answer is yes, great. If I need to increase a little bit more, I can do that incrementally without having to add another 500 bucks a month to our top line, or excuse me, to our uh, expenditures uh, to make that happen. So that really goes after everything you've listed here. Complexity, gone. We're using industry standard stuff. Knowing Linux is very helpful. If folks needed help with that, I'm happy to have that conversation with anybody that's interested offline in terms of how we've abstracted away even on having to know Linux to make this work. Um, so uh, it reduces complexity dramatically over the hyperscalers. Billing, I talked about the cost savings, how to scale infinitely. For, for my purposes, it might as well be infinite. Um, and then, of course, if we're reducing our expenses, our margin gets a lot better. Or in our hyperinflationary environment, it allows me to put my money where I'd rather be putting it, which is with my team members and the folks that, that I, I'm paying to serve our customers. So it allows us to control our costs for our customers retain customers. So we're holding steady at a time that everybody else is jacking their prices up and continue to pay our people a good wage. So that's kind of how it's played out for us. Um, I, I I don't know if I left you any air at all on this slide, Joe, but uh, anything I missed or anything that you would backfill from the data center side? I'm afraid to say anything because I, I have a feeling that the internal virtuoso team right now is going to be like, Joe, you should just shut up and like let Brian talk, right? Because you're you're, you're really you're really you're really doing a great job here. Um, no, you know the one thing I will say is uh, in this next slide was kind of talking about that is this is exactly why we built this, right? And and I I'll say it when I came to virtuoso to help out build this new cloud, I was looking at it only from the data center and the infrastructure side. I really wasn't looking at it from the MSP side, but uh, you know, Alex Fine, the CEO, came, he said, "Joe, the key is the MSP. They are the ones that have to be to have the, the the just simple, easy interface and the flexibility to be able to start selling today and be profitable tomorrow." And I really had to change my mindset, and uh, it's the reason I'm having this call with you today. Is is you're right? You want the passionate guy about data centers and infrastructures on the back end. So that you don't have to be right because you need to be exactly. passionate and focus on the solutions for the end customer. Um, and that's what we're trying to do here is, is, like you said, kind of create that one interface that can simplify it down and make it easy for you. But if you are an expert and you do want to be able to check the expert button and go, I'm going to know Linux command line a little bit, you can, but but you don't necessarily have to, to use the platform and it's not in your face, right? You don't have to go take a certification test uh, and in training in order to do the basic things that you need to get the job done right off the bat. Um, and, uh, and then how do you bill? How do you charge? Like we have very transparent pricing with margin that is built in for the MSP. And what I mean by that is we know that as an MSP, if you go out and you say, Hey, guess what? My services is 20% more expensive than the hyperscalers or the industry standard for this, because I have to get paid, right? I have to add my services on. The customer's not going to want to do it. They're going to go, well, I can just go buy it myself. Why am I paying you to do this? And, and you're marking it up. So what we do is we make sure that the manufactured suggested retail rate for this is actually lower than the industry standard. And then we bake margin in for the MSP on top of it. So we know you have to sell it cheaper and we know you have to make money doing it. Um, and so it was really great to hear that you've done that calculation. This is the first time I've actually heard that um, from you, Brian, that, uh, you know, we were able to save you that much money on uh, right off the bat. And it's huge because of all of our MSPs on here, the hosting industry is taking the biggest hit, right? The consolidation specifically there is kind of the first wave of 
hey, this has been commoditized to the point where the hosting providers are really, really getting squeezed. And the only way they can make money is on, uh, uh, you know, white glove being the professional to the customer, which is hard to, to, to convince somebody to do. So to hear that you were able to take just your raw hosting costs and save you that money, that's just some money in your pocket immediately, right? That's a testament to what we're trying to do here. And uh, I just want everybody to know, I saw our participant count drop by one. And so I started to tear up a little bit and cry during that last part that Brian was talking about. Luckily, they joined back in. So I guess they dropped just because of a technical issue. But I am watching. And if you leave while I'm talking, I will be sad and just know that. Um, but anyway, let's jump on here because I want to get into the demo and show everybody what we're doing here. And I know that uh, you've already been with us uh, for a half hour now. And uh, I definitely want to have time for uh, some chat and answers to these Q&As. So I'm going to accelerate this a little bit. I think we've touched on all these points. But essentially, you know, there's there's one aside I should uh, add, add on to this, Joe, and I'm seeing that you just hit one of the bullet points. Um, when I talk about a little bit of Linux command line, um, that's been useful for how we're using platform as a service. Uh, but I do know that Virtuoso also includes WordPress as a service. So and I'm saying this as a Joomla guy, and we're going to work closely with Joomla so that Virtuoso also gets Joomla as a service. Uh, I'm promising that Virtuoso is not, but we'll have that conversation offline, Joe. Um, yeah. But the the infrastructure for those tools are very, very similar. The, the uh, technical specifications are nearly the same. But WordPress as a service is available today. Um, so if you're a WordPress provider and you want to be managing those containers one website at a time in that setup I was talking about, one for web server and file system and another one for database, um, uh, WordPress as a service, and you don't need to know any Linux to make that happen um, as it stands right now. It's literally uh, one button set up and you're off to the races. Uh, so I've heard, Joe, I'm speaking a little bit, a bit out of my experience on the WordPress side. I'm going to uh, let you talk, but no, we need to do the same thing for Joomla as well. And yeah. having one of our partners is definitely going to drive that. Um, I've actually started some of those conversations and it's funny because my Slack was going off right before the start. And I was like, oh, I got to mute this thing. And it was Theo internally, who is the guy who kind of uh, designed some of our new interface uh, or spearheaded that for the WordPress offering. And, uh, and I was like, Hey, we're getting requests for Joomla to be added the same way, you know? And so I think that's, uh, that's really cool. Anyway, I'll just this moment of transparency, just to point out um, that that's one of the things I'm enjoying about the relationship as well, Joe, is uh, as we've gone back and forth, I've had to learn a lot in terms of uh, where Virtuoso fits most solidly in our business. I'm very uh, excited about the flexibility that your team has shown in terms of understanding how we're using the tool um, so that you can continue to iterate the tool to benefit us and other companies like us. So it's it's just kind of been this cool uh, reciprocal relationship where we're both uh, learning how to take what's already a great platform and take it to the next level. Let's show people what we're talking about. Yeah, let's do it. Thank you. Um, okay, so I'm going to jump in here if I can figure out how to switch windows here. Okay, so this right here is what we call the Virtuoso Partner Center. And hopefully I can click here and I didn't get logged out. I think I kept re refreshed in the background. That's good. And uh, essentially in the email that you were sent, you should have had a registration link for this as well as a promotion, which I'll talk about here in just a second. Um, because like Brian said, you have to transition those workloads. And so we understand that you'd have to pay for those in two different places at the same time. So we give you uh, some, some credits to get started so you can transition. But uh, you can register off that link and get in here today. There's no reason that by the end of this webinar, you can't be a uh, MSP that is now selling cloud services and be profitable. But what we tried to do is we just tried to make this interface as simple as possible for the key things that MSPs need to get started. And so you can go in here and you can manage your clients. So you can go in and add additional customers. Um, you can get a registration link if you want to add an order button on your website so those customers can order directly from you and it goes straight into uh, the clients underneath you. So it's fast registration for you. You don't have to have some complicated integrated system if you don't want to. You can copy and paste this link in your site and start selling right away. Um, you can brand it with your uh, company name and your logo. So instead of seeing Virtuoso Hybrid Cloud in the top left corner, you can actually sell this to your customer as a, a branded solution that you provide. Um, and what you're actually providing them is you're providing them with the ability to get infrastructure as a service. So you can go in and deploy from our entire range of data center locations, uh, the ability to manage uh, like traditional uh, infrastructure. So this would be, I want to deploy a virtual machine. I want to deploy uh, my own uh, uh, Kubernetes cluster for a customer that's managed by the platform. 
I want to be able to deploy a VPN back to their location so they can just have an Active Directory set or server that sits there in case their office blows up so their customers can or so their employees can still work from home. You can go to, you know, a couple clicks, deploy. Now you're in and you're selling infrastructure for your customers. So super simple. Um, same thing, uh, Brian, this is where you live. You live in the platform as a service offering, right? So you go in here and you launch that panel and it takes you right in to be able to do stuff like databases that can be deployed with a few clicks or, you know, we said earlier, we you can do the same thing with WordPress. And what's really interesting about this is you pay just for the resources that are used and consumed for this. So if you go in here and say, I want to deploy a multi-region WordPress cluster, you know, it's just a few clicks and I'll even click on it here and, and, and get this started while I'm talking. Um, and you, the, 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 the ease of use of this is hard to explain when we talk about the complexity. If you were going to take and try to say, you know what, I'm going to launch a web server. I'm going to install WordPress on it. I'm probably going to need to manage it through some control panel. It has some additional licensing fees to do that. And then all of a sudden your customer's like, yeah, but it's slow. And you're going, wait a second, why is it slow? And how can that be slow? Oh, well, it's on a shared web hosting server. And then now we're getting into the infrastructure piece that Brian was talking about that nobody wants to know. Whereas on our platform, you go in and say, you know what, just give me a WordPress website that's clustered across all of your locations. You know, let's just pick and choose two or three locations here around the world as an example. And then I'm going to hit install. Okay. And what's going to happen is, a few minutes later, you're going to have an email in your inbox with WordPress credentials to where you can start building the website as a web developer, right? The complexity that I'm talking about there is this is a modern website that's containerized with load balancers and separate containers for the database. And it's set up to be clustered across the world and will automatically scale resources with utilization or, or do all this. That's a few clicks. I don't know of any other platform that you can really do that. And, and, and Brian, you're not even using this part of it, right? Cause you're just basically going in and, and creating your own custom environments in here yep. where you can build out everything yourself. But this is more for the more technical uh, person, right? Where you go in right. and say, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to deploy a VPS and put our own control panel in. But for most people, they can just go to our marketplace and pick and choose from any one of our pre defined ready to go applications on our platform as a service. Um, and so, and, and this partner center just makes it super easy for you to manage your own infrastructure that way. Um, whether it be S3 object storage, uh, or to go in and manage your clients and their infrastructure, you can masquerade as them and log in as them and, and manage it for them as well. So, you know, I, I really highly encourage everybody that's on here to, to, to register. And I'm going to jump back out of this demo because that's all the time I have, unfortunately, but you can get in here and play around today and you can do it for free. And the way that you're going to do that is in the email that you were sent, you had a registration link. You can use this QR code. I swear it's not going to make you send Bitcoin money to my wallet. I didn't switch that slide out right before this started, um, but you can get in here. You can start playing around. You can see just how easy it is for you to be able to start deploying that. And one of the things that I didn't mention um, which we'll get into here in just a second, is that we are using our partners to provide the infrastructure on the back end. So when I talked about that sustainability of the, the, the market with the hyperscalers taking over, what I didn't talk about is the fact that we are trying to develop a solution where we just become the middle, the middleman between the cloud provider and the MSP. Right. And Brian, I know that this slide resonated with you. I was actually struggling uh, with what to say on this. So I'm going to let you talk a little bit here. But, uh, you know, our job is really just to make it as easy as possible for you as an MSP to consume those cloud resources and focus on the first thing on this page, which is the client, because that's all that really matters. Right. Um, but we try to do it in a way that's sustainable, meaning low cost to you, you only pay for what you use. And on the back end, we're empowering that alternative cloud market so that the physical infrastructure of the internet doesn't uh, get to the point where it's no longer accessible to everyone and these options aren't there anymore. That democratization piece is super important to me. I know it isn't to every service provider out there who isn't interested in the infrastructure, but you know the only reason we were able to design and build this uh, and be this successful is because we are designing this platform uh, with that sustainability in mind. And Brian, I'll, I'll let you speak on this slide here a little bit and then Maura um, will go on. 
to questions? Yeah, I think uh, I'll just uh, say a few words about this slide because uh, I actually uh, did a front run on this earlier in the conversation, just acknowledging, understanding where we fit in the value chain. Um, so you had uh, you talked about your experience, Joe, as running a data center. I really talked about our um, evolution from really a freelance website creator all the way up through understanding ourselves as providing hosting services for our clients and for subscription, and now really understanding ourselves as um, being positioned because of Virtuoso to be providing actual infrastructure and um, uh, data management services beyond simply we host your website. So Energen is really positioned as what we think of as a white glove uh, hosting provider. We handle all the backups, we handle the software updates. Um, uh, in the same way that Virtuoso has abstracted away my need to uh, care about the data center on the back end, we try to abstract away for our clients uh, the technical overhead that goes with owning a website. Um, so uh, we're working with folks that want to manage their own content, that want to have some understanding of how their website works. But when there's an issue or a concern or uh, is it secure, is it backed up, that's the kind of stuff that we just try and take care of for our, for our clients. And Virtuoso has allowed us to sit happily in that MSP, that managed services provider slot um, to provide that value. Just a couple of technical points coming off the back end of the demo that might be of concern or a question mark, uh, especially if you're just diving in and learning where things are. Because again, it's different than the control panel that most website builders would be familiar with. Uh, Virtuoso does come with a, a file manager for the container that handles uh, the web server and the file system for your websites. And then the database container um, also comes preloaded always with PHP My Admin. So if that's a tool you're used to using to uh, work with your database, those tools are baked in. In addition, the marketplace provides uh, uh, easy to use uh, setup for Let's Encrypt. Um, so all of the tools are there. They might be in a little bit different place, but notice all the words I'm using are words that if you're a website builder or host, you're already familiar with. I'm not inventing new terms for what this stuff is. It's all there. It's all present within the Virtuoso platform. You just might need a little bit of time to figure out where things are at or, or how they play out. Uh, but once you figure it out, there's, there's a mad logic to all of it. It makes perfect sense in how it uh, fits together. I swear, I swear we didn't plan this, but you perfectly transitioned me into the next slide every time, Brian. And this is, we're getting to the very end here. So stick with us because Q&A is coming up in just a second. I'm not going to focus heavily on this because I know we've kind of bombarded you with stuff already. But right now, if you go sign up, you can start selling these things today. So it's not just web hosting. Uh, I know that's what Brian does, but we have uh, that object storage, uh, the infrastructure as a service, which would be more traditional cloud hosted virtual machines, um, you know, our managed Kubernetes database automation. And, uh, uh, and then of course that full platform as a service, which uh, caters not only to web developers, but also to um, uh, web or excuse me, to development shops in general, anybody who's designing code and wants to be able to go rapidly test it. It has a ton of cool integrations and features around that. Um, where you can take the existing tools that you're writing your code in and uh, and integrate it straight in or have it pull from repositories. Uh, so if you're a programmer or somebody like that, this uh, that definitely has some cool features. And I didn't want to jump too technical into those things. I really wanted to let people know, hey, get in there and start playing around. Let's, uh, let's let you look at it. So um, we're at the end here. We're to the Q&A section. I'm going to leave Brian's information up there. If any of the stuff that you've talked about, you want to continue the conversation, of course, come to us, either one. Uh, we'd be happy to continue that conversation on. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and pull up my chat and my Q&A here. I haven't actually looked at it yet. Um, amazingly, nobody's dropped off. I, one person dropped off, but it was because they went to sign up and start using it, I'm pretty sure. Um, so let's see here. Uh, I see the Joomla shout out that you were talking about. Um, yeah, just to follow up on the Joomla 5 launches next week. So uh, oh, cool. Joomla is uh, everybody's favorite platform that they forgot about a decade ago. Um, it's It has done incredible things in the last three years. Um, uh, with Joomla 5, uh, microdata is built in. Uh, it's had multi-factor authentication forever, custom fields, multilingual from the ground up. Everything I'm saying is in core. You don't need any plugins or extensions or to figure out how to glue and duct tape stuff together to make it work. It's all there fully integrated with a beautiful admin interface. So if you haven't checked out 
about Joomla in the last three years, I strongly encourage you to do that. Um, yeah, Joomla 1997. Thanks, Larry. Yes. And uh, <laughs> 23 as well. Um, so check it out. Uh, it's got some great stuff. And Joomla.com does have free demos. So if you go to Joomla.com, just like the WordPress.com, you can register for no additional cost, for no cost um, uh, to spin up a test site to check that out. So that's my quick Joomla plug for the day. Uh, at some point, can you speak to the resilience or high availability? Um, this was a huge question for me. And it's one of those where you go, the proof is in the pudding. Um, as I've acknowledged, we're uh, just a few months into this relationship with Virtuoso. Um, we are working our way into that relationship, but I can tell you that our website, energen.org, is running on uh, Virtuoso's platform. We're a big fan of eating our own dog food. So before we would put our customers out there, we're going to put ourselves out there first. That's how much we trust the platform. Um, I can tell you the performance has been rock solid. Is uh, Knock on wood all over the place, Joe, as we go there, right? Zero <laughs> downtime to date um, in relationship to the stuff that we've moved over. And I can tell you our time to first bite is ridiculous. Um, anything that we're seeing, so every website that we've moved, we do have in an intergen.org's uh, homepage would certainly fall into this category um, where there might be other things that are impacting our um, Lighthouse scores negatively. It is not... Um, it is, it is not the virtuoso infrastructure that's doing that. The uh, well-optimized sites that we've moved over, the performance is, is ridiculous in terms of what we got in for time to first bite. Um, so that's been great. Joe, you probably should speak a little bit more to the resilience though, because I'm just a few months in. I think got? I should let you talk. Um, but no, um, yeah, part of the reason that it is so resilient and highly available, I spoke about it a little bit, but obviously this is uh, cloud infrastructure. So these are all built on a cluster of, uh, underlying hardware that is meant to have uh, the highest possible uptimes, right? Nodes can fail. We can do, there was a maintenance notification going on. We have a status page for that uh, while I was giving that demo. Uh, that's transparent to the users on the platform. That was back end software updates or whatever. That wasn't actually causing downtime. We still notify you things go wrong, right? Whatever you we want to be transparent. We want to let you know, hey, we're working on it. But at the end of the day, we built this cloud infrastructure because we were in the back end designing the software for the companies that have been running clouds forever, right? Like Virtuoso was one of the first companies to uh, create virtualization with their first containers and they open sourced that technology, right? And even our flagship products today, um, such as our infrastructure service are using OpenStack, right? So we're huge contributors and users of open source. It's kind of that same mission and philosophy of trying to create an open and free uh, commerce and, uh, and everybody can be successful. Um, but specifically around the resiliency and high availability, because on our platform as a service, you're getting deployed inside of, uh, you know, kind of uh, the newer web technologies uh, uh, where it's containerized and built for scale and everything already. And then the platform controls that on the back end. You can actually go in and just drag a, a scale, a, a slider and say, hey, a minimum amount, my site should have this resource, but I only want to pay for that when I'm using it. But at a maximum, if I need it, because it's Christmas time and I've got an e-commerce site and my traffic doubles during the middle of the day, scale the resources up, right? And you can just with a slider do that. And then on the back end, it's deploying more containers. Uh, so it's got a, a, a load balancer that sits in front and then it's got a container with just the web server. Well, it's going, okay, add another web server, add another web server, add another web server as needed. And it's it's doing it all transparent to you as a user. It's just doing it because you've set the slider to say scale when it needs to. And then guess what? At nighttime, when your activity obviously drops back down, it'll scale back down on its own to just what you needed for that bare minimum that you set. So it's like super intuitive. I wish this was a technical um uh, demo and uh, we can get more into that go in there and play around for sure but um, uh, but the platform is just built with technology that supports that stuff inherently and we're on as like the second question so I'm going to try to speed it up a little bit here because we, we've already gone long on time but it's been obviously uh, I'm looking at the next one and they, they say I'm glued to the screen so uh, you know we've somebody's interested in what we're saying so that's good um, uh, where is the cost savings deal um, okay so yeah, I had it up for a second um, and we've got this QR code here, but you'll get a follow-up email to this as well. Um, but it's essentially the registration for our, our Virtuoso Hybrid Cloud. Um, and there's uh, there's stuff on our website about it. We'll definitely email you after this. <clears throat> it was supposed to be in the email you got when you registered for this. Um, hopefully that's true. But no matter what, we'll make sure everybody who attended uh, gets a copy of that as well. And essentially what we're doing is... Uh, 
uh, a month of free uh, credits that you can use to play around with it. So when you get in there today and start messing with it, you don't have to worry about that. And, uh, uh, and the opportunity for you to, to, to start consuming some of it, if you wanted to, for actual workloads, you're going to move over. Um, and that helps offset that cost. Um, there are, uh, USA locations already on the platform. We've got Dallas and one of the benefits of Virtuoso is that we just launched this a uh, few months ago, <clears throat> but we've got, excuse me, sorry. We've got customers all over the world that are already using our software for their infrastructure. And we're just going through the legal paperwork and adding them in, but we're going to be scaling up the amount of regions and locations we've got dramatically. And then if you are an infrastructure provider and you do like doing that stuff, we can talk about how you can become a provider on this as well, because we are using the partner infrastructure to power this, which means we're letting service providers at every level contribute and, 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 and benefit from this, right? So if you say I'm a hosting provider, great. If you say I'm an, an, a managed service provider, great. If you say, hey, I'm a, a, a data center, a CSP, awesome. But maybe you're just somewhere in between. There is a reason we call it virtuoso hybrid cloud. Our software offerings are made to be able to build edge solutions, on-premise solutions. Um, so there's ways that we can talk to you about how you can contribute uh, as part of that. But there's definitely already USA locations in there and more coming. Um, minimum commitments, it's uh, both. So we have the ability for you to go in there, pay as you go, where you just consume the resources and pay what you use. I actually think that might be, Brian, what you're doing. But we also have the ability for you to go in just like any of the traditional clouds that are out there and say, you know what, I know I'm going to have this set of resources that's just going to sit there. And I feel confident that tomorrow it'll be there just as much as it is today. And you can commit to us on a one or two or a three year basis, and we can get you additional cost savings and reduce, reduce that price down. And what a lot of people have been doing is they've been saying, hey, I want to get in there, test it out see what this is all about, make sure my time to first bite is low, my site performs well. And then once I feel confident in it, I'll go and I'll go, hey, let's have that conversation about doing a one or two, three year contract so that we can, uh, you know, set lock that price in, guarantee that and get some discounts by pre reserving those resources. So we have the flexibility to do it either way. But even on our pay as you go model, which doesn't have any commitment whatsoever. You can get in there, become a cloud reseller. I don't know why you haven't already done it. Um, we've been sitting here for an hour talking about it. But um, you know, even on that particular model, um, with the pay as you go, we're 25% cheaper than the hyperscalers. And we're 20% margin built in for managed service providers with that as well. So you're going to be able to offer it as a discount and you're going to make money doing so, even on a pay as you go. There's no, hey, you want to be a reseller partner. You first have to qualify and have 10 trained people and you have to commit to $2,500 a month, which means in reality, it's going to take you six months to a year before you ever see a dime. No, you should be able to go sell one of these solutions and start making money on it on the very first sale. That's really critical and important to what we're trying to build here. So, um, uh, okay, good. So we did recently kick off... Um, uh, one of the questions that came in, I'm not sure you can see it, uh, uh, something with Vulture. I'm sure a lot of you have heard them if you've been in the industry for a while, where essentially our platform is a service offering. If you wanted to use that for multi-cloud and you wanted to build it on your own infrastructure, so you don't want to go consume from our cloud, but you want that same ability, all of the product offerings that are in here can be offered on-premise or our platform as a service can be offered it's agnostic to the infrastructure underneath it. It can sit on top of Google. It can sit on top of AWS. It can sit on top of Vulture. Vulture's got a whole program designed around it with instructions on how to deliver it. So that is something that we offer as well. Um, let's see here. This is, I've been mostly going through the chat and hopefully I didn't miss anything here, but we've got another open question as well. Um, someone wanted me to actually explain the client server setup for something like QuickBooks or Sage 50 or Sage 100 uh, as a server in this platform for multiple users to connect in a client server workstation setup. So there's quite a bit there to digest, but if I were going to sit here and put my old, you know, CSP, MSP hat on and talk about how I would design that, to me, that would be more, um, related to the infrastructure as a service offering. And so you would go in there and you would deploy a Windows server and you would install whatever server is necessary for that customer on top of it. So it'd be QuickBooks. You know, I know QuickBooks is wanting everybody to go to QuickBooks online, but I can tell you with every conversation I've had, 
the old QuickBooks people prefer. And so that's actually a, a very big use case. So you just deploy a VM, install QuickBooks on it. It's already a remote desktop server uh, if it's running Windows Server. And then to make sure it's secure, you can go in and have the, uh, use our built-in VPN service to, to connect that to the existing uh, office location or wherever so that those customers are, are coming in through an encrypted VPN. Or, or you just you know two-click, launch v, uh, VPN, tell it, connect the public to the private and next, and you can put your security settings on and go. Um, and, uh, uh, and then you can essentially in real time, go in and change and expand or add more VMs or because we have that uh, reseller functionality in the platform right off the bat, you can create each customer inside of their own private tenancy. Maybe you're having a more advanced customer and you want to have them be able to log in and, and look at it, manage that stuff. When you create that new customer account in the platform, I didn't dig too deep in it. I'll let you play around with it, but you can actually give each of your customers their own separate account uh, underneath you to where it's all isolated and private for them. And it doesn't cost you any more. You're still just going to pay for the raw resources you're consuming for all of that combined usage. So, um, all right. And that was all of the questions. Uh, someone just let us know that they had to bail. Um, so uh, I think that's a good way to end this, right? The customers are leaving us, Brian. We've gone, uh, or the or the viewers are leaving us. This is, uh, hopefully we've covered every topic. I'll give you another chance to do a shout out here. And yeah, I think we're there. Uh, I did notice uh, Jamie Rodriguez was asking about minimums or commitments. Uh, Jamie, if you want to hit up either uh, Joe or myself, uh, we can put you in contact with the right person. But uh, our on-ramp was uh, zero to infinity uh, in terms of, uh, like I said, we were paying for resources as we were consuming them. Uh, the, the base unit is a cloud lit of, of, and it's a measure of compute and RAM. Uh, it's like four bucks per cloudlet ballpark. Um, and actually it's a little bit less than that, depending upon where things are at. So it really starts at nothing and works its way up. Um, from there, I just want to do like two seconds to acknowledge, Joe, everything that you just said, uh, supporting open source. I know the dashboard that's provided for the Virtuoso hybrid cloud environment is proprietary, but you guys are um, pioneers in the open source uh, space. And um, I, clearly that uh, speaks to my heart. Um, I'm passionate about the open source communities, Word, whether it's WordPress or Joomla uh, or the projects, the Linux community. Um, and you guys are still actively supporting those open source platforms that you created and are continuing to feed innovation uh, upline as well. Uh, so I wanna thank the Virtuoso uh, team for doing that, for pulling all the tools together in an easy to use interface. And the comment that I shared with you earlier this week is Virtuoso has allowed me the cost savings and the flexibility without the complexity that you could get from the hyperscalers without having to sell my soul to get it. <laughs> um, so everything you're talking about is supporting uh, small and medium uh, data centers, MSPs like myself. It's bringing together all the, the best of what the open source community has to offer in an easy to use, simple industry standard, industry standard language platform um, that just abstracts away all the garbage and lets us focus on serving our clients. So thanks again for the invitation to share this webinar with you today. It's been a real pleasure and I look forward to continuing the conversation and the relationship down the road. I'll see you at CloudFest, question mark. Oh, yeah, definitely. I'll see you. All right. Thanks, Brian, again. We uh, super appreciate you coming and joining us here today. It's been uh, it's been really great having you uh, test the platform out and now being an advocate for it. And uh, and I do appreciate all the, the kind words you've been here today. And hopefully everybody who watched uh, learned something from this. And uh, if you have additional questions, please hit us up. But otherwise, enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks for joining, everybody. Have a thanks, good one. Everyone.